You're listening to One Family, What's God Doing? Where we explore what God's doing in YWAM locations throughout Virginia. We can't wait for you to find out what God's doing today. Welcome back to What's God Doing? And we're going to do something a little different today because we want to show what God's doing online. So most of the time, when an entity has a website, it's kind of like an online brochure, an easy way for you to find out what they're doing, what's happening, how you can get involved. But when we set out to rebuild YWAMVA.org, we didn't want it to be an online brochure. We wanted it to be an online ministry. We wanted to find ways to provide equipping, support, encouragement, not just where we are, but around the world. And that's taken many different forms from this podcast to the courses we built out and our weekly blogs. In fact, each week we try to put out two blogs, one on Tuesday and one on Friday that pairs with that week's episode of What's God Doing? And so we wanted to give you a taste of what one of those blogs looks like. And hopefully you will be encouraged because we want you to know that we are journeying with you. Each week we are putting out content to help you as you grow in what it means to know God and make him known. This blog is titled, Is That What God Said? We believe that God still speaks. Not all Christians believe he does, but here at YWAM, we not only believe it, but have experienced it. In fact, this online ministry is a result of hearing and responding to God's voice. Here's the thing. It's one thing to hear God's voice, and an entirely different thing to understand it. Sometimes we can get so excited to hear God's voice and respond that we don't stop to consider if we actually comprehended the message. When we don't, we can end up doing the opposite of what he spoke. A great example of this is in Acts 21. The Apostle Paul has had an incredibly fruitful ministry spanning the known world, and members of this widespread church love him deeply. This is why a prophetic word sent them into deep lament. If Paul goes to Jerusalem, he will be arrested, persecuted, and possibly killed. Many received this prophetic word. The disciples entire, implied in chapter 21, verse 4. Philip the evangelist's daughters, implied in 21, 9. Agabus the prophet, direct in 21 verses 10 through 11, and Paul himself, implied in 21 verse 13. These all received the same prophetic word from the Spirit. However, all but one agreed on the interpretation. How would you interpret a prophetic word of guaranteed harm on a loved one? Through the Spirit, they urged Paul not to go on to Jerusalem, 21, verse 4b. When we heard this, we and the people there pleaded with Paul not to go up to Jerusalem, 21, 12. Meanwhile, Paul had a different interpretation. Then Paul answered, Why are you weeping and breaking my heart? I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. 21, 13. How could they hear the same prophetic word and yet have vastly different interpretations? It comes down to this. Our pursuits shape our perception. As the Spirit gave this prophetic message, the recipients shaped it based on their pursuits, which were likely honorable ones. Their love for Paul led them to pursue his safety. Their respect for his ministry led them to pursue its longevity. Their commitment to the church led them to pursue the avoidance of threats. Of course, very natural responses were present as well. Fear that harm to Paul could lead to trouble for them. Doubt that Paul was making wise choices. In other words, whether they were seeking Paul's safety, the protection of his ministry, or their own self-preservation, they shaped the Spirit's message to fit their own understanding. Paul knew that their assessments were logical, but not spiritual. 
Spiritual wisdom reminded him, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Matthew 6, 33. Paul did not want to die, nor did he want his service to the Lord to be wrongfully halted. But while the others saw long life and long ministry as his calling, Paul recalled Jesus' original, difficult invitation. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Acts 9, verses 15 and 16. Paul already knew he was invited to suffer. So when the Spirit said he would suffer in Jerusalem, he was ready to step forward. Even more, he was told he would not only speak truth to the Gentiles, but their kings, and his imprisonment made this possible. Among the leaders he witnessed to through his persecution was King Agrippa, who said this, In this short time, you have almost proven to me that I should become a Christian. Acts 26, 28. Imagine what would have happened if this body of believers who loved Paul and his ministry convinced him of their misinterpretation. Paul's understanding that the Spirit's word of persecution meant that he should go resulted in the transformation of the world. The churches matured in their understanding of what it meant to not only hear God, but interpret with spiritual, not mere human, wisdom. Kings were introduced to Christ, as well as other leaders, guards, and countless others. Believers became bolder in their proclamation of the gospel. Now, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. Philippians 1, verses 12 and 14. Luke, the disciples, and the others did not understand why Paul wanted to foolishly walk into a trap. But when he would not be dissuaded, we gave up and said, The Lord's will be done. Acts 9, 14. They released their own understanding and will as an act of spiritual obedience and thus contributed to a global spiritual impact without knowing it. A false interpretation of a spiritual word can result in the opposite of what God intends. A wise interpretation of a spiritual word can result in the opposite of what we intend, which gives us an opportunity to die to self and live for him. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Philippians 1, 20-21 Church, When the Spirit speaks, let us not be rash in our interpretations. Let us be honest about our pursuits, whether honorable or selfish. Let us be courageous enough to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and in all our ways submit to him. When the interpretation is clear, let us be like Paul and stand firm no matter how many oppose. But when it is not, Let us be humble like Agabus, who faithfully shared the word without his own take. The ramifications of doing otherwise cannot be taken lightly. Jesus made this clear in Matthew 18, 6. God still speaks, and he invites us to listen. Let us together grow in really hearing him.
We hope you were encouraged by this written word. And we want you to know that there are many more already there and many more to come. If there are topics that you would love us to explore in written word, let us know. We love getting feedback. We love your ideas. But what's even more amazing is the Spirit is constantly bringing ideas. And we believe that there is someone out there that needed this word. We may never hear that story. We may never see that fruit, but we are confident that God is at work, that God is moving, and that God is moving in your life as well. So be encouraged. And thank you for listening and joining with us as we together as one family explore what it means to know God and make him known. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of One Family, What's God Doing? If you'd like to learn more about what God's doing in Virginia, visit us at ywamva.org and join us next week for more stories of God at work.